My grandmother was a woman of small stature who worked, scrubbing pine floors white until her knees ached and knuckles bled. But on Sundays, wearing her finest dress and hat, she walked proudly into church amongst the rich and notable like she was one of them, took her seat in the choir, and with the voice of an angel, boldly commanded their attention. But towering way above her size, demeanor, and those floors she scrubbed was what she stood for and passed on to me that was worth more than possessions or money. Never let circumstances define you. She wanted better for us and taught us to rise above challenges with tenacity. She said, Gwen, we'll push you forward. Believe in yourself. You're not an isolated shower, you're a tornado, a torrential downpour. My family's from Nova Scotia. I was born in Montreal. I planned to be a social worker. But instead, ironically, my career path intersected with my grandmother's encouraging words. I saw an ad for on-air weathercasters for Canada's National Weather Network with an offer to learn meteorology. I had some on-air experience hosting a community TV show, and I thought, what if I could get this job? Hmm. The fact that I spent time in my science classes writing poetry in the back of my notebooks did not deter me. What if? So I applied, and I got hired. One day, a major snowstorm hit with the biggest impact in eastern North America since weather records began. Power outages, airports closed, cities crippled. With continuous across Canada coverage, suddenly mine was the most important voice on air. Later, a reporter interviewed me, asking, you have some major accomplishments. What got you to this point? Actually, I'd never really thought about it. So I thought for a minute and said, I'm a risk taker. I don't want to say what if all my life. I want to know what's on the other side of the if. Hmm. Looking back, applying for that job with no weather experience, it would become the first of many times when I, unexpectedly, became a trailblazer. I never would have imagined the career I've had. Five-time Emmy-nominated, Emmy award-winning. Recipient of President Obama's Lifetime Achievement Award for Community Service. Associated Press Awards. Named one of the top 100 women in Maryland commendations from the U.S. Congress and Nova Scotia House of Assembly, five National Association of Black Journalists, NABG, BJ Broadcast Awards, and first Canadian and first meteorologist inducted in the NABJ Hall of Fame. I never would have imagined it. A friend of mine, from Toronto, got a job offer in Chicago and was very conflicted about going. She asked me, how did you do it? How did you just pack up and move to another country? I told her I wanted to build my career and take opportunities that came my way, so I just decided to go for it. I was saddened to hear she turned down that offer. I thought, hmm. What's so different about me? She had curiosity, but not the confidence or the courage to get out of her comfort zone and take that dream job. I realize a lot of my inner gifts came from the role model women in my family. I come from a family of more women than men. 
not counting the three husbands my grandmother had. <laughs> my mother, aunts, great-grandmother, grandmother, women whose husbands passed way too soon who became CEOs of their household, confident, determined, raising their kids, and without hesitation, taking in others or making sure others had, I learned confidence from living with it. I became confident by these women who always supported me to follow my curiosity. When I moved from Canada to the US, a decision my mother supported, about two months in, she paid a visit. I had to go MC an event with an anchor from another station. In fact, he was the competition. Didn't face me. We went and introduced ourselves to the vendors. Got to the first table. The vendor said, you're that new weather anchor from Canada. I said, yes, I am. You do that early morning show. I said, yes, I do. He said, welcome. I said, thank you. The second vendor, you're Canadian. Yes, I am. You do the weather. Yes, I do. Well, this happened at every table at every vendor. I looked at the other anchor and proudly said, hmm, guess we know what station they watch. <laughs> at the very last table, the vendor said the same thing. Well, with a huge smile, I said, I can't believe it. I've only been here two months. I can't believe that everyone watches me. He looked at me and said, we don't watch, we met your mother. Even with this level of confidence, it isn't enough sometimes when life throws you a curveball. A near fatal car accident. I was trapped in my car with multiple injuries. To my neck, my back, my arms. A DC city bus had hit my car head on. I opened my eyes in an ambulance. How are you alive? How are you alive? The paramedic said. I suddenly thought of my grandmother. I couldn't move, but I could speak. I'm not an isolated shower. I'm a tornado, a torrential downpour. That's how I'm alive. He looked at his partner and said, that's that weather lady from Channel 5. <laughs> Lying there, weak and wounded, I was not letting my circumstances define me. Thank goodness for my grandmother, who gave me the gift of courage. In my earlier years in Canada, in Montreal on television, there were very few people of color on Canadian TV. One day, an older black woman approached me on the street and said, I sit my grandchildren in front of the television whenever you're on. I tell them you've got to watch her because you've got to realize your potential of what you can do with your life. That really floored me. It brought tears to my eyes. It became a defining moment when I realized how my success could influence young people of color. My family was always helping others. I soon realized a deep desire to use my developed potential to reach back and pull others forward. I realized my visibility as a TV personality could make a difference for a multitude of worthy causes. My first project, a mentoring program for inner city girls called Positive Images, with a focus on education, realistic goal setting, life skills, and knowledge they could share with others. Opening their minds to experiences outside of their environment like dressing up and going to the symphony, fine etiquette dining, and a lifelong memory meeting Coretta Scott King when she visited Montreal. Years later, 
as a mother and adult, one of them wrote saying, thank you for teaching me. I get to decide who I want to be, to decide what opportunities I want to create. I settle for what I am, the sum of my choices. It was just so simple. She went on to mentor other young girls herself. I realized that geographical borders do not change the needs of communities. I went to do a story at a nonprofit called Our House in Olney, Maryland, that serves abused, abandoned, homeless male youth. They were trying to raise money for a new dorm. The director told me about one young man who would not take his socks off, not even in the shower. They were puzzled by this. They eventually found the reason. He was embarrassed about his feet because they were full of cigarette burns. That's how his mother punished him. I couldn't get that story out of my head. So I decided I was going to do what I could to make a difference for him and all the other young men at our house. I didn't have a personal connection with disadvantaged youth. I didn't have a personal connection with diabetes, but after having a ball, emceeing a fundraiser for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, and they asked me to be on their board of directors, I thought, gosh, that helps kids. And I said yes. When I brought back stories of our house and the things we were doing, one of the board members said, Gwen, you've really taught me something. My kids have type 1 diabetes. You sit on this board and have no personal connection to the disease. So I want to do something to help support what you do. And he handed me a large check for our house. You never know how what you do may end up having an impact. You also never know when one day you may be the one on the receiving end. I was always the person who gave help. But after that car accident, I was the one that needed help. I couldn't drive, couldn't prepare meals. I felt helpless. It was a time when we didn't have the apps that we have now, so neighbors and coworkers took their time to drive me to countless doctor's appointments, brought groceries, cooked and dropped off meals so I could eat. Their care, kindness, outreach made such a difference. We all have gifts deep inside of us. Some of us have not recognized or developed them yet. When I was in kindergarten, my teacher complained to my mother that I would not sit still. Always moving around, sitting in seats I wasn't assigned to, giving other kids my crayons and belongings they didn't even ask for, and constantly, constantly interrupting with questions and talking, and she compared me to a noisy, chattering magpie. I guess I was just always concerned about people, what they had or had not, a trait that teacher didn't appreciate. I came to learn that these traits were a major part of who I became and how I ended up where I am, how they served me and others throughout the years. I realized I couldn't have been a trailblazer if I conformed. That annoying curiosity was my fuel to pursue the other side of if. By the women who raised me, their example, sharing what I have became second nature. 
I realized I could use my recognition to benefit people and nonprofits I could pull forward. It's our job to open and strengthen our inner gifts. Have you ever said to yourself, what if? Invest in yourself. That is the best way that will allow you to be in the position to contribute to others. Don't look back, look forward. Start right where you are. I challenge you to be curious, be confident, and have the courage to find out what's on the other side of if.